We'll be using the laws of exponents to work out these problems. So for part A here, when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. With the numbers, though, we multiply like normal. So 4 times 5 will give me the 20. And then m to the 1 times m to the 1 gives me m to the 2. n squared times n to the 4th. You have two n's sitting here. You've got four more here. So if you add up all the n's, you end up with six n's. We'll come over here to letter F. Similar idea, you have 15 sixes, imagine, written all the way across the top in the numerator. You have nine of these sixes written across the bottom. So if you start thinking about canceling, I mean, just, I'm not going to write out all 15 here, but if I cancel a six for a six, those cancel out to ones, and whatever I have left over is my answer. So for this problem, if you can imagine, you've got 15 of those sixes written across the top, and then you've got nine of them across the bottom, and you cancel, you're really subtracting, and you're going to end up with six of them written across the top, or six sixes written across the top. Now you could go ahead and evaluate what is six to the sixth power. Because the power is kind of big, we're going to leave it as six to the sixth power. For letter B, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the powers together. Keep in mind that negative 3 is raised to the 1 power. So when I write this up, it's going to be negative 3 to the 1 times 4 power. Keep negative 3 inside the parentheses, though. x to the 4 times 4. And then y to the 2 raised to the 4th power. Again, you're going to multiply those together. Now these negative 3 to the 4th power is slightly smaller than 6 to the 6th, so I'm going to go ahead and, and rewrite that. Negative 3 times itself 4 times is going to be a positive 81. x to the 16, y to the 8th. Be careful if you use your calculator. You have to include the parentheses around the number negative 3 and raise it to the 4th power. Otherwise, you're going to mess up the sign. Letter G looks complicated, but it's not really. Because remember, the property that we had before, anything raised to the 0 power is automatically just the number 1. So it doesn't matter what's going on inside of here. If I raise it to the 0 power, the answer is going to be 1. Coming down here to this next problem, again, I have a power on the outside, so everything inside is going to be raised to that outside power. So it's going to be 2, I'm going to put that in parentheses, to the negative 3, C to the negative 3, D to the negative 3, and then 4 to the 2, and then raising powers to powers, you multiply. So c to the 6th, d squared. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is imagine that there's a line here. Any number that has any power that's negative, I'm going to move it across the line. So I'm going to take this 2 to the negative 3 and move it across the line. And when I cross the line with these negative exponents, it's going to make them positive. These all have positive exponents, so they're going to stay where they are. So 4 squared, I'm going to call that 16, c to the 6, d to the 2. But these on the bottom, when they drop below the line, that's going to change the sign of the exponent. So all of these signs now are going to be positive. So on top again, still the 16c to the 6d squared. On the bottom, 2 cubed is 8c cubed d cubed. Simplify the number part just like you did back in elementary school. 16 divided by 8, that's going to be 2. Or you can think of it 8 goes into 8 once. 
8 goes into 16 twice, so the 2 is up in the top. And now again, think about if you have 6 of these C's written across the top, but only 3 on the bottom and you cancel, you're going to have 3 of them left over on the top. But for the D's, you only have 2 on top, 3 of them written across the bottom, so you have more across the bottom. So when you cancel, you're left with 1 left over on the bottom. It's not necessary to put it as D to the 1, you can just leave it as D. So this potentially could also be your final answer. Taking a look at the next one here, I have a power on the outside, so everybody inside is going to be raised to that outside power. So again, when you raise a power to a power, we're going to multiply p to the negative 4. And then on the bottom, that 4 only goes to the top, by the way, not the bottom. That parenthesis isn't down here as well. So these are all going to stay the same for right now. I can all go ahead and say what negative 2 to the 4th is. That's negative 2 multiplied times itself 4 times. That's k to the 12. The next thing I'm going to do is get rid of negative exponents and then start simplifying because I've got too many k's and too many p's in my answer. I should only have one variable um, one type of, of each of the variables. So for this one, 16 thirds doesn't reduce. I don't change it to a decimal either. Okay, we're talking fractions, so leave it as a fraction. But here, notice I have k to the negative 5 in the denominator. So when I move it up across the line, it's going to become k to the positive 5. I don't want to move k to the 12. It already has a positive exponent. I'm only moving the negative exponents. So p to the negative 4, that term I'm dropping down. Cross the line, change the sign of the exponent. p to the 7 is good where it is. So I still have 16 thirds. But then again, think about this. I've got 5 k's on top, and then I've got 12 more k's on top. They're on the same side, so they're not going to cancel. We're just going to add them up and call it k to the 17. On the bottom, you have 4 p's, and then you have 7 more p's. So all total, you have 11 p's, or p to the 11th power. Letter D is similar. We're going to raise everybody to the third power here. So it's negative 5 in parentheses to the third, A to the third, B to the third, and then 10A on the bottom. So go ahead and simplify negative 5 to the third. Notice negative 5 doesn't drop across the line. The exponent isn't negative. The number can be negative, but the exponent, that's what we want positive. So we're going to keep negative 5 to the third and call it negative 125. a cubed b cubed over 10a. So notice here, negative 125 over 10, both of those are divisible by 5. So 5 goes into 10 twice, 5 goes into negative 125 negative 25 times. So all I did was reduce the fraction, keep it as a fraction, not as a decimal. And now I've got too many a's here, so I've got to think about it. I've got three of them up top, one on the bottom. So if I cancel, I'm going to have two left over on top. The bigger number was on top. And then b cubed is still sitting up there. For this letter, i, Notice there's no power on the outside that we have to take to the inside. So we're going to be simply simplifying our numbers. 15 fifths, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 15 three times. 
And then I've got six X's on top, but one on the bottom. So that's going to leave me five X's on top when I cancel. But here, notice that's a negative nine. I need to get that down below, make it a positive exponent before I start counting up how many I have. So now I've got nine Y's on the uh, bottom along with 11 more Y's. So I'll total, I have 20 of those. And three X to the fifth in the numerator. Here again, we're gonna use the power rule. So everybody inside is gonna be raised to the power of three. Notice these parentheses go all the way down to the denominator. So this is going to be a negative 2 to the 3rd, a to the 3rd, 3 to the 3rd, and then b to the 3rd. Simplify your numbers. So negative 2 to the 3rd, negative 8, 3 to the 3rd, 27. A to the third, so that's a positive exponent, that's good. B to the third, that's also a positive exponent, so that doesn't move. And notice we only have one A and one B, so there's no more simplifying here. Negative eight twenty-sevenths doesn't reduce, so this would be our final answer. Negative eight twenty-sevenths A cubed over B cubed. For the last one, Raise everybody to the negative three power inside. So again, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the powers. So P to the 12, Q to the negative three, R to the, and then again, negative three times negative three, positive nine. We have one more step here because we do have a negative exponent. So with that negative exponent, drop it down below the line, change the sign. So we have P to the 12 on top. It didn't move because the exponent is already positive. Q to the 3 and then R to the 9 on the bottom. It doesn't matter if you put the R to the 9 first and then the Q to the 3 because it's multiplication down there and you can multiply in any order.